We have with us today Mr. Steen Pugat, the former CEO of Four Fingers. Now, Steen, um, share with us a little bit more about yourself and um, you know your whole journey at Four Fingers. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I've been in Singapore for almost 20 years. I've uh, worked with, with uh, quite a few different food brands, ranging from McDonald's to Les Amis, which is fine dining, to Michelin stars. Um, and I've always been curious about what makes this business, different businesses uh, work and what makes them tick. I joined Four Fingers in 2013, so I've been there for more than five years. And I really tried to select all the good things I've learned from McDonald's and Burger King and also Les Amis and try to put that into to Four Fingers. Okay, okay. So how did you manage to scale the business? Because you mentioned that you know when you first joined, it was just a one store, one outlet. Yeah. And now today we have so many outlets across Singapore and it's still growing. Right, it's going to be 30 soon. Like yes. Yeah. All right, so yeah. share with us you know, your strategies. Well, for me from the beginning, um, my entire career has been about brands. Mm -hmm. And I always want to build a brand with Four Fingers. So running chicken restaurants is a part of building a brand. Uh, but brands take time to build up. It takes a lot of consistency. And consistency relies on good systems and processes and training and so on. Mm -hmm. So what, what I think made it possible for us to grow from one to 30 outlets is mm -hmm. because we were quite obsessed with having consistency good systems, processes, and then hiring people, giving them the right training to run the business so that every customer would get the same experience in every single store, every time. Right. It is a highly competitive market, as we all know, in the F&B industry. So, you know, what are some of the challenges that you face, and how did you overcome them as you scale? Um, well, I, I see challenges as opportunities, basically. That's just my, my personality. Um, many areas to, to be concerned with. One is finding the right people. Mm -hmm. Because after all, it is a people business. It is people serving people right. in the restaurants, making sure that people give um, every customer a great experience. You have about a thousand people per store per day. Mm -hmm. So making sure that everyone walks away quite happy uh, mm -hmm. is, is very important. Um, landlords in Singapore tend to have the upper hand. You have very short leases and, and quite tough commercial terms also. Right. Um, but to me, what was important was that we always try to create a brand that was in high demand from consumers because mm -hmm. then you are attractive not just to consumers but also to landlords as well as to potential staff. Mm -hmm. So really thinking and acting as a brand was what I set out to do from the very beginning. So how did you guys actually differentiate yourself? Because there were already existing brands, right? We know KFC, we know all the McDonald's. Yeah. And then suddenly there's another outlet called Four Fingers. And, uh, you know, it's slightly it's priced slightly higher as well, yes. I yeah, suppose. Yeah, so yeah. how did you guys differentiate yourself? I, I always saw Four Fingers as the equivalent to, to Red Bull versus Coca-Cola. Like Coca-Cola okay. is, is a global, well-entrenched brand in mm. all markets around the world. Red Bull is essentially the same thing. It's a carbonated soft drink. Uh, but Red Bull as a small brand can do things that big brands can't do. So I chose to see Four Fingers small size as a strength. I mean that we can be nimble, we can be different, we can be fast. Wow. So we're not trying to beat McDonald's or KFC on their own game. Mm. Rather say, let's engage them areas where we are better, which is a better experience, better food, a little bit higher pricing. But I believe that if you give people value for money, that's more important than a low price. Right. So what do you think are your biggest achievements as a CEO at Four Fingers at that time? The, the single biggest achievement that I have is, is very clear that um, uh, we have built a brand. Mm -hmm. Of course, we've built about 30 stores, mm -hmm. but above all, we've built a brand. Now, now brands take some time to, to build up because right. brands only exist inside consumers' minds and in their hearts. Um, the one moment when I got a little bit sort of um, misty-eyed was when we hit 50,000 likes on Facebook. Wow. Um, and we had almost 3,000 people write to us, congratulations, how much they love the brand, telling us their little stories about how they went on their first date or took their father for a meal and so on. <laughs> because it showed me that what we set out to do from the beginning, which was to build a brand, mm -hmm. we had really succeeded with that. And that was to me the, the one thing that I'm proud of. Right. Okay. What will be the business philosophy that you stand by? Um, business philosophy I, I think really is to put the customer first customers first yeah okay. that's important and making sure that you don't you don't let your internal concerns dictate what customers see for instance I think it's very often that companies say 
what does it cost me to sell something mm -hmm. that drives the price. Right? Consumers don't care about what it costs you to sell them something. Right. They care about what is the value to them. to them. And that may mean that some products you can't sell because it has a low perceived value, whereas other products might be very profitable because consumers see them as having a high mm -hmm. value for themselves. So I think putting the customer first and, and always seeing the business from the customer's point of view mm -hmm. is the most important part. Right. Okay. So what would be your advice? to budding entrepreneurs out there who wants to venture into this field of business? I, th I think a very common, I wouldn't say a mistake, but, but a very common challenge when you start a business is that you're starting without systems, processes, and you rely on yourself as right. an individual. You do everything. You are, yeah, you are the first employee yourself, and therefore everything emanates from you. As you add more and more people, two people, five people, ten people, you will need to pull back yourself mm -hmm. and put in place a replacement which can only be done in the form of, you can't clone yourself, but it'll be in the form of good systems, good processes, and so on. Brands are built on consistency. Now, whether you are a B2B or B2C brand, it's important to be consistent around your own standards. Mm -hmm. And as you yourself, as an entrepreneur, pull back from the day to day and replace yourself uh, with, with other people, mm -hmm. they need to know how things work inside your mind so mm -hmm. they can do things with the same consistency. So I think budding entrepreneurs and young companies need to be very aware of the benefit of embracing good systems, good processes as a way to make business scalable mm -hmm. and make sure that you are consistent around the standards that you set from okay. the beginning. When you say systems, what kind of systems are you referring to? Um, some, some people call it SOPs, so, SOPs, so Standard Operating Procedures, basically yes. saying there is one right way of doing one thing, mm -hmm. whether that is a way to run an analysis of a product mix or whether it's one way to prepare food or whatever right. it might be. Everything. S everything Perfect. basically can, can be or should be something you can document mm. so you can scale it and replicate it. That's important. Same for the recipe as well, right? Yeah, I exactly. So. Yeah. Well, okay. whatever. <laughs> you should make sure that everything you document is protected by confidentiality agreements because otherwise you're putting everything you know into yes. something that people can say, oops, I'll walk away with that. Right. You don't want that to happen. Right. That's your IP. That's your yes, exactly. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. So um, you took a short break. Right, um, you know, after Four Fingers, what have you been up to? I have been doing quite a bit of mentoring. Um, yeah, so, so basically helping budding entrepreneurs and business people with avoiding some of the mistakes that I learned along the way myself. <laughs> and those um, mistakes were? <laughs> oh, the too, too many to, to mention too many. here. Yeah, yeah. But I think mistakes is a good thing because if, if you're smart, you learn from them and you avoid making them again. Um, I've been doing uh, quite a bit of speaking also um, mm -hmm. at, at meetings and conferences, again trying to share my learnings. Mm -hmm. And I've been looking into sort of what's next because Four Fingers was a very special journey for me. It's about five years of taking essentially one outlet and turning it into a business with more than $40 million in revenue. Mm -hmm. So for me the next step is going to be important. Um, I'm starting work on a, on a big project in the Philippines where we've taken over 450 outlets of a bakery chain wow. that we're trying to turn around. Um, it's a 50-year-old company that has been has been around for for well, the longest time in the Philippines <laughs> and outside I'm also. I'm trying to guess the brand. Okay. Yeah, it's called Goldilocks. Oh, Goldilocks. Yeah, Goldilocks. Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, so, so basically, we we recently acquired that and we'll be giving it um, some fresh energy mm. because it's another example of a brand that that people know but are using less and less. Now, this is an important point. My brands are all about making sure that you can capture and defend your market share. Mm. But if brands are allowed to sort of fade into oblivion, they lose their value. Right? So right. investing in brands, especially with consumer businesses, is critically important mm. because brands have momentum right. and brand tends to carry the business forward, mm -hmm. but it requires a, a deliberate and intentional investment from the owner. Right, but you know, Goldilocks have been around for a long time. There yes. are a lot of brands that have been around for a long time, right? But how do you ensure that you capture the new market which is the millennials of today, right? They're so indecisive, quick in making decisions. Yes, they yeah, want to yeah. eat this and that. Every day it's different menu. So how do you... It's an excellent question. One of the things that you would have seen from Four Fingers is that we try to, 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 to change the conventional marketing paradigm where brands say, we must establish loyalty from consumers to us. We said, no, we must establish loyalty from us to consumers. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example of this. Uh, last year, we hosted uh, an open air concert at Fort Canning. Mm, it was a okay. free concert. There was no Four Fingers food there. We said, look, music is a big important part of going to Four Fingers. Okay. Um, so why not take music out of the stores to a place where people can come for a great experience? So we hosted um, a concert with Singapore bands and DJs at Fort Canning. 
Okay. There were 3,000 people that showed up for this free concert, oh. which we did because we saw it as an investment to creating the right kind of goodwill around our brand. So targeting millennials, I think it's important. The brands are aware that millennials are very well informed. Mm. They are very quick to make decisions and they have a short attention span. Yes. So you got to make sure that you are seen as an attractive option to them okay. rather than as in the old days expect them to sort of come to you. I think yes. it's a fundamental shift that needs to happen. Right. So now with music, you attract the new millennials of yes. today. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So share with us, Dean, you know, um, you're so busy. You're, you're you know, moving into an area wherein you're going to manage more stores now. So how's your typical schedule like in a day? Um, I get up early, get my kids to school, and I tend to end not too late because I think it's important to have a, a good balance. Um, I probably am quite demanding to work with because I set high standards for myself and I expect the whole company that I work with also to have these high standards. Um, but I, I believe a lot in giving people uh, freedom to make good decisions, mm -hmm. but within a framework. And that's the system that I mentioned before, systems, right. processes. So once you have established that, you can let people go out and do what they're supposed to be good at. Mm. Um, so I try to have a good balance myself between sort of being a good CEO, being a good father, and being a good whatever I try to do. <laughs> so um, what do you do at your own free time? Um, I do running, cycling, mountain your biking. family? Yeah. That's wow. kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fantastic. I so do the outdoors. You do the outdoors yes. and listen to yeah. music as well. Yes. And learn what young people like these days. We yeah? try to, yes. Try to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Thank you so much, Steve, Pleasure. for sharing with us about your thoughts and your experience as a CEO at um, Four Fingers. And all the best uh, for your new um, endeavor as Thank well. You. All right, so thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to meet Steve live, do join us at HER Asia Summit on the 26th September. We'll see you there.